We'll call the meeting to order at 7.32. We'll make some fancy announcement about this being a, a meeting held according to the governor's proclamation of match whenever and that it's being recorded. And if you're watching, you need to be cognizant of the fact that it's being recorded. So don't share anything you don't want to share. We'll do a roll call to, uh, well, we already know we have a quorum. I won't do that. The hell with that. It's going rogue today. It's an <laughs> FYI. My internet is being spotty at the moment, so. Oh. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it keeps freezing. <laughs> yeah, you just froze. That's true. Well, we'll. If it gets really bad, you can turn off the video. That might help. It'll take up less bandwidth. Okay. Anyway. The agenda. We have a number of items. We have a couple of things that have come up that are going to be timely that we'll have to deal with too. Um, the first item was committee reorganization. The, we're required to, Kristen reminded us that we need to reorganize at our first meeting after we start the new fiscal year. So that would be the next time we'd meet. Um, and so that's just something for us to all be aware of. I'm happy to serve as chair one more year, um, but if someone's eager to be chair, um, that's something that we can, I'm happy to have someone else be chair too. So uh, one of the things that Maureen and I talked about was it might be wise to have a vice chair, which we haven't done in the past. We did it with when uh, James Holyoke was on, but we haven't done it since. And and it might be assumed that the vice chair would um, take on the role of chair. And we can talk next time about whether we want the chair to serve, you know, two years or one year or three years. <laughs> three years? Four. That's well, four. You like the president. <laughs> four years? The planning board used to change chairs every year. Um, and then someone would be clerk, and that would change every year. And um, so, can we make that lifetime appointment for you? No. Yeah. <laughs> can't. Can't. Conservation is kind of whoever gets roped into it, and then you kind of have to quit to not be chair anymore. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, different committees do it differently. Um, and board right now is uh, people tend to be chair for extended periods of time. But, you know, in, a, in our case, we have someone that can help with minutes. So that takes the burden off of a board member, I mean, a, a committee member, because often that's one of the most time consuming, if it particularly with the way the town clerk and the attorney general want us to keep minutes now um so it just you know having someone like maureen help us means that that job isn't quite as complex but anyway we'll we uh so at our first meeting in the new fiscal year as i understand it we're supposed to address this issue and so I wanted everybody to be thinking about it between now and then. And then the next item is the confirmation of members' terms. The way we understand it right now, Julie and Eloise would be um, the two members that would have to be reappointed by their appointing group. So Julie would be reappointed by the Rec Committee and Eloise would be reappointed by the Housing Partnership. 
if so if that hasn't already transpired i think both those eloise and julie both said that they would be interested in serving again so they should just mention to their appointing bodies that they'd like to be appointed and they, they can go ahead and do that does the housing partnership meet anymore eloise Raise your hand if they do. Oh, oh. There she is. They haven't yeah. met in a year because no developer has needed them. Right. Well, until what did what you usually use the rule of thumb that until someone else is appointed in your place, your your appointment remains valid, right? That's only good for elected officials. That <laughs> Nice that try. does not work for appointed. Appointed on the day of your expiration, that's it. Yeah. You're fired. So anyway, perhaps you'd like to talk to your appointing authority. I think I would need to, yes. Thank you. And those are for three years, right? Yes. So those would be for three years. And then, as we understand it, Carolyn and I would be terminated unless duly appointed a year from now and then mj wayne and ellie would be um up in 2025 all right everybody square with that minutes we've got minutes from 5 16 do we have a motion so move. i make a motion to approve in a second any additions or corrections there was i actually found one myself this weekend i had ellie here and absent so <laughs> i changed that yeah. <laughs> and then eloise had sent me an edit also so so you've made those i did yes so so then we're voting on those as amended and any other questions or comments all right, so we'll do a roll call on that. Carolyn? Aye. MJ? Aye. Wayne? Aye. Eloise? Aye. Aye. Ellie? Aye. Tim? Aye. And that's it. Good. Thank you. Invoices and payments. Um, so we have two that have come up. Carolyn, do you want to explain the the one that you're most involved with? Sure. Um, so 72 Carter Street, the um, when Kristen talked to town council about the PNS for that, Town Council recommended that we do what's called a phase one, I think it's an environmental assessment is what it's called, just to make sure um, that, you know, nobody buried gas tanks up there or whatever, so that the town knows what they're purchasing. Um, and so Kristen asked us to ask conservation to get a quote and the quote was $3,500 to have that done. And um, Tim and I discussed it and there seems to be money left in the administrative account that we can spend this year. And these kinds of expenses are exactly what that money is put aside for um so i'm hopeful that you guys will support a vote for that and then in addition to that town council recommended that we do a title search back oh, right. years. and kristen wrote today and said is it possible the UCPA funds for or out of the administrative account for the title search? And she felt for the amount of money that it would take, it would be worthwhile. And I think unless people object, it probably makes sense to to tack that on as well. I emailed Kristen and said, because I don't want to run afoul of the accounting office. 
um, if 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 we're billed after July first, does it come out of our fiscal twenty five our fiscal twenty four funds? Uh, Tim, why wouldn't you just encumber it with this year's funds as well, long as you order it now? If if we if we do it now, but we don't get billed until after the first of the after the first of the fiscal year. Yeah, but if you're asking for it now, just encumber the funds. Yeah, right. I just want to make sure June it in J July. Because when you fill out the encumbered paperwork, you would tell her such and such and such a company for a title search, 72 Coburn and for how much. And so so she has those forms. We we actually have them. That's what we're going to meet on tomorrow when we. Right. She gives meet. them out at the end of the fiscal year. For so, I, so I actually. Right. It's a way I, to torture us. Yeah, so we've right. got them all, we've we've got those already and we can fill them out and okay. Correct. I just don't want to, you know, sometimes you get involved with good. All right. So any questions or comments about the expenditure of uh, we don't have a figure for the title search, but it didn't seem well, like it was gonna right. be right. So I in the email, she uh the Town council estimated between one and three thousand dollars, and if we wanted, we could put a cap of I think she recommended fifteen hundred dollars, um, and that they search until that money is spent. Um, so, be a, so we could do between either. Between the two, would be about five thousand. Right. And Maureen and I will spend some time tomorrow making sure that we've got five left in the account from this year. And if we don't, then we'll try to slide it into an expenditure for next year. But thoughts from folks about the expenditure of the 5,000 to accomplish these two things? You know, they're both prudent to do. You don't want to have a problem. I know, make a learning. motion that we, we award those two things. Or do those two projects. And we have we'll a move. second on both, Wayne? Yes, on both. All right. And any other further discussion on those? All right. We'll do a roll call on that. Carolyn? Aye. MJ? Aye. Wayne? Aye. Eloise? Aye. And Eleanor? Aye. Thank you. And Tim, I. Uh, June Miller used to do this for a livelihood, so she'd have a better handle on it than I would. Maybe we should just hire her, right? <laughs> oh, I don't think she has the seal that they're looking for. Uh, right. Now. Updates from the chair. Mass Housing Solutions CPA funds. So, Mass Housing CPA. This was that article that came out. Is that right, Maureen? Mass Housing sent a, a report out that argued that a substantial number of CPA communities had not expended, in some cases, well, I think they... The, the confusion was that they almost suggested that the money hadn't even been allocated to be placed into the the, the buckets, the ten percent buckets, um, and I think there was a little confusion. They they reached out, not they, but a newspaper um, or a magazine out of Boston followed up on that report because they said Berlin hadn't spent any of its money for housing out of CPA, and. I reached, uh, I res responded to them, but I didn't hear back because they wanted to do an article. And then um, Spectrum News in Worcester got in touch through Kristen and I got back to them and their, uh, their anchor, Olivia, I can't remember her last name, reached out and we got back and forth and they sent a videographer out and he 
did a little spot that was on Spectrum News about, I just answered some questions that they had, basically saying that, you know, we were already at, at over 10% that we had just formed a housing trust. We were going to, we voted to expend money in the next two years for the assistance of a housing coordinator through the regional planning commission. We we're going to use CPA money for that. And then the housing trust would probably um, look at the expenditure CPA money for opportunities to help with rental assistance or first time home buyer or aging in place or whatever. So um, the report I thought didn't fully explain the predicament that particularly small towns are in where um, the, um, they're only generating small amounts of money if they're, if they're like 1% and they're a small, smaller community than we are, their opportunity to generate funds is pretty limited. And then once they do generate them, they may not have the capacity to expend them. Um, particularly when you get into a situation like we did when we were looking at 72 Carter, where it's far more complex than you realize, so. Right. And realistically, we haven't had it that long. No. We haven't had, had CPA all that long. You know, a, an affordable housing project can be a lot of money. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. I mean, housing's got 165000 or something like that out of CPA. So, you know, we voted to commit the 30000 for those two years of housing coordinator. And I would think that the trust would probably find some recommendations to come to us with you know, maybe working with Habitat for Humanity and some tax title land or something like that. So, sure, but realistically, that's not even enough to build a house. No, even no. if the town, even if everything else was ideal, yeah, it's not enough money to build a house. Interesting. Yeah. I read the same article and I came away with they, the feeling I got was it, towns. We're putting money into a housing trust, and it was sort of secret. I was debating whether I would respond that, you know, the housing trust has to make reports, too. Right. And you have very little money to actually do a big project. Yeah. Stuart, um, Saginaw, Saginaw the, the individual that we work with, with the consortium for CPA out of Boston, his advice was don't commit your 10% on an automatic basis at town meeting to the housing trust. Make the housing trust come to the CPA committee with proposals that are specific and then um, go to town meeting and vote for those specific funds to be allocated to the housing trust so they can expend them for that project. Hudson for instance, just automatically a town meeting takes the 10% and gives it to the housing trust. But I thought and that was the requirement. Isn't that the requirement? Right. It isn't that it be given to the housing trust. It, it's that it be put into the bucket for community housing. Oh. And, and those <laughs> towns that give it to the housing trust- I agree with lose that. Lose accounting. You know, you, you, you don't have that authority over yeah. those funds anymore. And town meeting really doesn't have the opportunity to vote specifically for the expenditure of funds for particular projects. It's just a blanket, here's 10% to the housing trust. And like Eloise is saying, in a lot of cases, the money isn't necessarily spent. It's just but, sitting in but, their car. But the flip side to that argument, and I don't know whether it was because there was somebody I had this conversation with, I don't remember who, but the flip side to that argument of not giving it to the housing trust is that, you know, if a property like 72 Carter Street came up today and they said, we want to sell it, they might not want to wait a year until town meeting to do it and they could sell it, sell it out. So if you give the funds to the housing trust to be able to act, you know, whenever they want, because the funds have been put into their coffers so that they can act. You know, I mean that 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 creates the flexibility, so you don't lose opportunities. So it's kind of a check and balance. But I mean, I suppose you know, 
once burned, twice shy. So, you know, that's sort of a the message that if you don't do something that, you know, CPA, you know, would be supportive of, you know, it kind of behoove you to come back and say, this is what we're thinking of using the CPA money for that you put into our trust because, you know, just so that it makes sense. I don't know. I mean, not that they have to be beholden to us, but, um, but I can see that because I would hate to see the opportunity for something like 72 Carter Street, if, if something like that came up again, fail because somebody had to unload a piece of property now. I mean, not that yep. there's enough money in the coffers, but I guess that's just the flip side of that, that argument to say you want to have control, but that control could lose you an opportunity because some are fast. I mean, and, and like we just said, some of these opportunities are going to be small for things like that. It's not always going to be some big project. Anyways, that's just my the two cents. But if, if push comes to shove, you can do a town meeting in 30 to 40 days. Right. Yeah, and, and which is and not so I think, unreasonable. I think all these are good points, and I think it's just something for us to keep in mind as we move forward. Um, and I'd like to see what the housing trust comes up as to you know what are their priorities. And and there may very well be some sort of hybrid approach that we can take, yeah. where some money is is put into a kitty that they. They go, they might very well go to town meeting and say that they want to allocate, um, they want to use the money to put into a fund that they then control and have access to immediately that's going to be used specifically for one of these timely purchases. And then other times they might come and ask for town support for money from CPA that's specific to rental assistance, for instance, or something. So. Yeah, I, 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 I apologize. No, go ahead, Eloise. No, I was going to, I just said we need to find out what their mm. priorities are. Yep. That's exactly, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yep. Yeah, and, I don't have a problem with them having a pool of money that they have access to, but um, I think before I would be comfortable recommending that a town meeting and I'm sure people at town meeting I'd want to know what their you, you know kind of goals are mm -hmm. and what they might use that money for I would think that at a, one of our meetings you know maybe early in the fall we might invite them to come and and share some of their ideas because they will have been in existence then for three or four months and um the next item on the agenda is this housing coordinator uh, opportunity, and the they Central Mass offered the job to an individual, and Scott Hawkins um, participated in this in the interview process along with some of the other member towns, um, and the individual decided not to take the position. I don't know if they used it as an opportunity to. Um, bargain with their present employer or whatever but so the search has been opened up again as I understand it in there um, so they won't have someone first of July it doesn't look like it may be first of August or something like that so if people are comfortable we could ask the housing trust to come in and chat with us maybe in uh, September or something like that after the housing coordinator has been around for a little bit yeah I guess I would just say thinking about the categories of types of things that we approve, it's like that potentially is the one that could be more, most controversial, mm -hmm. perhaps, just depending on what they are, because I think people have a lot of feelings about, okay, is it to create a unit that you turn around and make affordable, and it's, so it's a one-time thing, or, you know, I don't know what rental assistance using CPA money looks like or feels like to people, so, you know, I think that the expenditure of these monies, even if it's through another, don't give into another organization to use, you know, people look back and say, well, this is what my CPA money was used for. And is that what I wanted to? Because you don't want to, you don't want to create a situation where, because this has to be renewed in what, how many years do people, have, do we have to continue to reauthorize CPA? I forget how often. I don't think we have to reauthorize it. I think it has to be in place for a certain number of years before it can be voted out. 
Oh, it doesn't have to be written. Okay. I don't think it usually has to be. it's usually it's three years. That's what I thought. Yeah. But it's just automatic unless somebody brings something to say, don't do it. I believe that's true. I guess I didn't understand that. Okay. Wait a minute. What am I talking about? Well, I thought, <laughs> I, I thought that with CPA, when it was initially passed, I guess I thought my impression was that at a certain point, the town has to vote to continue to create the CPA. Um, I think the, it's the other way around. Okay, so that's what Carolyn that just said. So the I'm CPA stays unless the town votes no. Right, okay. and I and I think it. I think there were a number of years, and I think you're right. I think it was three. Usually, it's not, around three. Right, because that you it has to the stay. DOR. Right. Okay. Uh, you have to have it at least three years before you can consider it. Correct. Might go for year seven, and then you say, "Hey, wait a minute," you know. Well, that's what I don't want to have. Cast in stone. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what I don't want to have happen, and I think that was my comment. Like, if there's that mechanism, you don't want to you don't want to do stuff that's going to trigger that because I think we're we're accomplishing a lot of good things. So, but I think and we haven't had that piece, but I think that piece will get attention. There, there have been a few towns that have had a town meeting vote to reconsider their participation in CPA, but by and large, the, the vote ends up being to stay. There have been some that have um, reduced their, their fee. Yeah. Um, and, and in some cases, those have been successful. There have been some towns that have reduced it for a period of time and then increased it again um, based on need um, so there is some opportunity there for change over time no i, th I think the housing trust and all that is great i mean it's it's definitely needed it's a huge issue so um okay so we can keep in touch with them and maybe we'll drag them in for a conversation um, we've got the funding agreements for the th three projects, one, two, two projects, three, three projects. And uh, Maureen, do you want to explain what you've well, got yeah, on they're, hand? They're all going to go out tomorrow. I just wanted to make a couple of um, confirmations. Should I send the 72 Carter Street to Maddie? So she can write herself up as the clerk of the works and she can be my contact for everything. Does that make sense, Carolyn? I I think it should be, mm, if, if you could ask Kristen, I think it's Kristen that should be the clerk of the works because okay. Conservation Commission can't enter into a legal agreement without yeah, it's not the a, it's town's not an, approval. Okay, so... It's the agreements that we talked about and, and what we're looking to try to do. And I did speak with June Poolin a little bit about this last week. And Kristen and Tim have spoken. What we're trying to do is get a point person who would be able to state or to be able to be, get the invoice if there's an invoice and then send it through. Maybe 72 Carter Street has elevated up to the select board. So then that will be fine. We can actually, I can see Kristen tomorrow and have them be the clerk of the works. Right, think, because they're the ones who are gonna sign the PNS. They're the ones that are yeah. gonna, all yeah. of that. And then um, those invoices can be funneled through. Okay, so there was that question. I think it's James for the fence. That one's gonna be pretty clean and simple, I believe. So that I can hand that off to him right in town hall. Um, and then the pavilion, I was hoping Julie was going to be here tonight. Um, the applicant is, is Bob Holmes. So I guess we'll send it to Bob Holmes and try to get that clerk of the works. But then that kind of segues into a little bit of um, this clerk of the works for your prior projects. So I do have some paperwork on balances and trying to close out fiscal 23. Horseshoe Pond looks great. That's all set. 
June Miller has been fabulous about submitting and documenting and having everything done for the bullet house. She's just about $9,000 of what their funding was. But the oddness is there is nothing for the tennis courts and the announcement booth. So for the tennis courts, the only invoice that's been paid for this fiscal year has been for the bid advertisement. That's the only thing that's on the sheet. <laughs> And for the announcement in booth, and I understand that the tennis courts and basketball courts are quite a long way. Like they're like, you know, we're playing tennis like next week kind of thing is what I, I understand. I haven't physically seen them, but I'm just saying, I heard that a lot of work's been done. And then the announcement in announcer's booth, um, they have used about $9,000 um, but there was some confusion with the accountant's office because it was a um an exception uh an accepting of an a a a donation that the select board took. So that was for the sign, right? That all I, yeah, so I think that was a sign. So but, Clinton saving because Clinton Savings Bank was gonna give yeah. about ten thousand for the sign. And they were going to then expend CPA money for the electrical work, which was close to ten thousand dollars as well. Yeah, and but it was, what you're they, saying is we, they, they've we seen no they've seen no invoices. No that's invoices why, like, and no payment of any. Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, so they've got fifty dollars, fifty four dollars and ninety four cents for the basketball and tennis court so far, um, paid out. And nine thousand eight hundred and fifty for the announcement um, and the, the scoreboard situation. So Tim and I will probably look at this more tomorrow. Yeah. But this is why these agreements and having that clerk of the works pretty much filtering those invoices first through us. And then sending them over to to the accountant office for a couple of reasons, like even like with the invoice that you all approved tonight, if that went directly to accounting, they may make the assumption that that's coming out of the conservation bucket. But we know it's been voted to take it out of the expense for admin stuff. Yeah. So that's why that's that. So anyways, that's just the quick update on that. We're probably before year end, we'll clean that up, but um, we'll go ahead and we'll change 72 Carter to um, to to Kristen, town administrator's office. James can still be the fence. And then I'll send to um, Billion to, to Bob and um, maybe we can get in touch with Julie or somebody to find out what's going on with their invoices. But as I understand, um like um, uh, June Miller does a great job because what Ju I love, I love June's um, which she, she gets the invoice and Ellie can probably confirm this. She takes it to her commission, all the commission members sign off on it. And then, then it get and she actually puts the article number, like she, she does a really good job. So when I leave, you can hire June and <laughs> she can take mm -hmm. care of everything. <laughs> but um, so you know, because one, like right now, you guys have nine articles that have been approved. So there's going to be lots of different, you know, buckets to be watching kind of thing. We want to make sure that nobody doesn't overspend. And if they underspend, you want it to go back into the, to the correct CPA thing. So that's kind of what's going on there, but everything's going to go out tomorrow. Um, and hopefully everything will come back. So I'll, you know, I'll, I'll stress, um, I'll send them everybody an email also that it's coming and that we want that paperwork back with that contact. Um, could I just throw in when you talk to Kristen tomorrow, yes. I, Kristen should be made the clerk of the works for all of them. She is the financial director of the town. 
Yeah, I think when she and Tim talk, though, Tim was, and then Kristen actually grabbed me. And she's like, yeah, she goes, um, she goes, she, she likes, she likes this process. Um, and then what will end up happening is we will, I will, I will, what I'm hoping to do is keep a monthly report for you that you will all start seeing on your meetings. So you'll almost know monthly where, where you, your, um, what, what, what's, what's coming down or in or, or out. And I'll do, give Kristen that same thing. And she seemed to be satisfied with that, but I can definitely ask her because it's a lot for her to like run out to the tennis courts and say, oh yeah, they, they striped the lines today. We can get that invoice paid. Yeah, but yeah, but whoever is striped, uh, they can call, say it's Bob Holmes, just because he's not here and I can pick on him. Okay. <laughs> you can always send her an email saying, I have verified it, it's done. And yet she can still approve the bill and get it done. What what we've said is that we want Bob to send those through us. Um, and Kristen and June felt comfortable with that approach. Good. Gives you guys better eyes on it, actually, is what will happen. So, and then that was the other part. I had just sent you kind of what we're asking, you know, the applicants to do and what I will do as far as the admin process. Um, so I don't know if you wanted to vote on that part of it, Tim, or not. I did write vote on the um, agenda just to accept the CPA invoice policy. Yeah, um, it, it it wouldn't probably do any harm to go ahead. Have we did that went out with the agenda? Did everybody get a copy of that? It did go out with the agenda. So everybody had a chance to review that, right? And mm -hmm. basically, it's just saying that we we want the paperwork to be verified by one of the proponents, essentially, and that they're passing that information through us so we can make sure that the right account is being um, taxed essentially. So, and we and felt, guess, go ahead, Wayne. But I guess my question is to, because of what Eloise said, so it's fine for us to then submit it. That's it. The town, town administrator doesn't need to like approve. We approve it. She approves the warrant at the end anyway. Yeah, so, then that make, then that makes perfect sense to me. She's seeing it all. And it's, yes, I mean, she has in this, to. In yeah. this way, it's double ver. It's verified by them. It's verified by us. Yeah, I think that that's a lot. That's more eyes on it. I think that's really good. Yeah. Thank you. So do, do we have a motion to approve the the invoice policy then? So, so moved. Second. And any discussion on that? I beat you, Wayne. And we'll do a roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, then, if that's the case, Wayne, how do you want to vote? <laughs> Did you say I? I, I, I. Eloise? I. Eleanor? I. MJ? I. Carolyn? I. Tim? I. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Um. Sudbury Valley Trust grant reimbursement. It looks to us, as we looked at the numbers, um, we took $48,466.70 in physical 22 out of open space to buy the horseshoe pond piece, and then $17,809.05 in physical 23 open space fund. So essentially that's 65, 66,000 or something like that, that came out of open space. The rest of it was undesignated um, or from the balanced reserve. So as we've interpreted what the state has said and what June has explained, that 66,000 needs to be um, allocated back to the open space bucket and the rest goes into the our, our general fund to be utilized at a later time. And I understand that that money, because we've received it prior to the end of this fiscal year, would be available for us if 
for instance, there was some sudden need for some of these funds and there was an article on the warren in in a town meeting in the fall if one were to happen um so that being said would um would we like to make a recommendation that we believe sixty six thousand and some change needs to go back into the open space fund so we can make that known to the accountant so move second and any discussion on that one that's all right with you carolyn i that's a great i think it's great yes um okay so we'll do a roll call on that carolyn aye wayne aye mj aye um, Eleanor. Aye. Eloise. Aye. And Tim. Aye. Okay, good. Thank you. Great. Do we have any updates from committee members? Um, I do a little bit. Um, we okay. had talked about the um, signage for our projects, having signs put up. So I reached out to you. Um, it turned out to be the painting and design, I think is the name of the department at ASABIT. Um, and spoke with John Hughes, who's the uh, teacher that's in charge of it. Um, <clears throat> and he said he'd be glad to work with us on that. He said he had actually done something else, submitted a proposal to the town. I, I guess that hadn't gone anywhere, but he said he'd be glad to work with us. And um, if we have ideas, you know, he could even work with us over the summer. He gave me his email, which I had shared with Maureen. Um, so I'm not the only one that has it. Um, and, you know, basically, so if we have designs or, or ideas of things that we like and can kind of show those to him and tell him what we'd like it to say or how it is, and he can put it on, you know, whatever types of material, so whether it's metal or whatever we want, I, you know, I said to him, it might depend, might vary depending on the project type of sign we'd want, but I said the other towns have them and, he was really, really great to talk to and stuff like that. And he said, so if we uh, have ideas over the summer and want to communicate with him, great, but it's something we could work with and the students could work on in the fall. So, and he, you know, but he could propose it based on whatever and we give us pricing and all that stuff. So. So do people have thoughts about what, what materials you'd like to see the signs made from and their thoughts? Didn't you include some signs in the email, Maureen? Maureen found some great ones. Yeah. I think on per permanent stuff, I'd like to see a little sign acknowledging that, you know, mm -hmm. we gotten it. And I think we need a temporary sign that they could stick in the ground and say, here it is. This is what's happening. So we might need a couple types. Right, I, I think, think it depends. Like I think some projects, that a banner might be more appropriate or a small wooden sign or a small metal sign. Yeah, I mean, like at the at the at the courts, it might be a sign that gets affixed to the to the fencing, or you know, but but at Horseshoe Pond, maybe there's already a sign there, or maybe it's a on a post, or you know, so it might vary depending on, you know, what's appropriate. Yeah. Yep. So, so least, but the sign itself could be similar and you know maybe a metal sign would make sense at the 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 foot the tennis courts but you know it depends on what it can get affixed to and all that so i think you know he's willing to work with us um, so wayne do you want to keep discussing with john this notion of several different prototypes that might be available and you can use some of the examples that maureen yeah uh, i mean I can, found I can that, you know just share with him I, the, were there any particular style of sign that people liked out of the ones that maureen sent there was uh, one green one it looked like you know eight by twelve it, uh, it appeared to be metal it was simple and that's what i'd like to see for the tennis courts the uh place where people can picnic the pavilion yeah 
Yeah, and you know, over by the uh, score scoreboard and stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't want th those to become an eyesore. Right. And they could be paid out of the undesignated funds. I did give it consideration. So, can uh, Carolyn, if you got those, can you share your I'm, screen? With I can. I was actually just looking at them. Oh, um, and they're actually available on, under the um, coalition's website too. That's actually where I found them. Like, what would you want at Horseshoe Pond, Carolyn? Right. So, you know, there is the kiosk. So something like this one could be put in the kiosk or something like this, but maybe smaller, like at the trailhead. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, there haven't, are I, haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't seen the kiosk, but I think coordinating it makes sense. Yeah. Look on the front of your annual report. Um, <laughs> I will go do that. Um, yeah, the the kiosk is on the front of the annual report from this past year. Okay. Um, I like that Jaycox tree farm. I mean, I think just like the way they're coordinating it in there, like so it depends on what the project is. So. You know, the same thing will end up probably with 72 Carter or something like that. Right. So like at the bottom. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. So it just depends on what it is. It doesn't always have to be the same, but. Right. Right. Yeah. But something like <laughs> this, maybe on the side of the tennis courts or this one. But I think Eloise's point about something temporary, you know, depending on you know, so while something's underway or right. it's cool. Well, we have lots of rocks we could carve into. <laughs> <laughs> Brellin's not, no shortage of rocks in Brellin. Mm. Um, I like the way this one looks too. This may be down at the playground. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, does the, does that, does that area have its own sign designating whatever it is like to, does it say, I don't know what it's called, South Common, you know, whatever, or I do not believe there is, and there has certainly been lots of sign discussion on the planning board as of late. Well, I think that's the one thing to coordinate. I mean, you know, I mean, and do we have to get approval for whatever, you know, so I mean, I think coordinating it, but, you know, so that there's not different conversations going on that we don't know about. Right. It might be nice to have a sign that designates that, you know, whatever, the pavilion and the tennis court. And the court. tennis court, yeah. Tim, what is it, 12 square feet? Maybe one sign. This is maximum size. Those are roadside signs that are used for advertising. Um, I mean, 12 square feet would be a fairly significant sign when you think about it. it right. They may not need to be, particularly if it's incorporated into some signage that may be there already. Like is, if, is, there, know, is there like for different conservation um, areas in town, are, is there like a standard design that is put up on those already? Most of the signage at, on conservation areas are either a kiosk, a freestanding kiosk, um, or Sudbury Valley Trustees puts their signs up. Um, right. Notice in Northboro, they have some metal signage that's being used for their um, conservation spaces that are you know trailheads and stuff like that right right but this kind of this kind of look this Jay Cox tree farm is kind of traditional for a lot of conservation areas um well 
can Wayne, are you interested? You're going to continue to talk to John Hughes then, and and uh, I'll talk can, to him. You can chat with Carolyn about what might be utilized up at the Horseshoe yeah. Pond site, and and then uh, maybe when we get the maybe there's something that we could chat with June about in a uh, place on the Fullard House as or in front of it as uh, time passes, just to say that there's CPA funding being expended. One of the temporary signs, for instance. Right. Um, and then we can talk to Julie about, and, and, uh, and Bob, John yeah. Holmes about the possibility of some signage on a couple of the projects down there. Yeah, like that's a great sign in front of this historic. Or a temporary sign. I like that CPA funds at work. Yeah. This one. So that's great. Yeah. 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 Gets the point across. Yep. I'll remember that, Eloise. I think that's a great idea. Good. All right. Have we accomplished what we want with that one? I think so. so well, we and it, yes, Eloise. No, uh, the other thing to talk about is how many would you need? The temporaries, you mean? Well, or I only the, think we need what one. Of, yeah. I mean, it seems like right now you'd you'd have you you I don't know as you'd put one on the scoreboard because the no one probably gets that close to it, but you'd certainly put one on the announcers booth. Um, and the tennis courts would have something when it gets finalized. The pavilion. And the would... pavilion. Yeah. Yeah, but and I didn't position. want eye clutter either. You know, it's a balancing act. Right. And that's why, you know, something that maybe is is visible as you get fairly close to it rather than from a distance um, might be appropriate. Right. But something small on, on the tennis courts as next to the gate that yeah. you use to get in and out so yeah. probably and same, same yeah. with the community garden fence that's sort of <clears throat> right okay i'll try to come up with a list of things and talk to some yeah. people i mean it's all proposal stuff so other updates from committee members and we don't have any public so we don't have any public input yeah. What have I forgotten, Maureen? Year in, so we just got to make sure we're all in good shape for that. But this board's, it's easy because you guys, your money does move along, so we don't have to spend it down. So yeah. that's good. Um, Our next meeting is scheduled for July 18th. Is that a convenient time for everybody still? Not for me. But right I'm, before I'm, my colonoscopy. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll be away. I mean, I may be able to see it on Zoom, but but yeah. I'm not really. <clears throat> I mean, I don't, it's not not going to be a heavy agenda necessarily, but no. if when are you going to excuse me? Yeah. I'm just so excited. I know it's great. <laughs> this is the most you've participated ever. I love it. Uh, when are we going to start advertising applications for next year? At next year is in May town meeting. So the applications on on the website. Um, I was thinking about it earlier this afternoon. I think the one and only that you actually have is the housing coordinator because that's moving on from last year. Right. So and I haven't heard of any thing else of anybody looking for anything Did we put something on the front mm. page of the town's website it's just people need time to start thinking about it oh yeah yeah and yeah. it takes always takes longer than you expect yeah, yeah. Um, there is potential that oh, there is potential that conservation will have an item but as with these things Right. I can put a post on Berlin Neighbors Connect just saying, you know, the information's on the website. If, you know. Yeah, something like that. 
That'd be great. Thank you, Wayne. Yeah. 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 Um, back to the meeting schedule for a second. I yes. have in my calendar, I have August 1st and 15th. Is that still tentatively true? Yeah, so what we did was we you have two every month, but the last three months, we made the decision between one of the weeks. So like, actually, we really were, we, I think we had July 6th to tell you or something. Um, and then, but we just went down to the 18th. So unless you guys have applications, you don't need to meet twice a month. You know, right. um, like oh, what's what's going to happen in July and August? Because I had made that little calendar. Um, I'll actually work on the dates for the next year so that we can make sure we get our Zoom and, and all of that. Then um, they will be on my part, you know, communicating the um, the projects to the state. And then in September, we'll be right back to doing the plan again. <laughs> So July and August are unless you had an applicant coming in, you don't you don't really need um, you know both 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 meetings in those months. I just we do it just so that we we can lock into that Zoom. And then what I do is when we don't have it, I let Mary know, and then she's always like oh, appreciative, and then someone else will take it. But um, yeah, so I can't unless I like I said unless there's an applicant and you've already heard the one about the housing coordinator. So that's kind of already been voted. Um, so you could make the decision now on what you wanna do for August. And then September and October, you'll pick up again, just because there's that um, potential of having applicants and just those other things that just get done as far as like the annual town report and your plan and, and those kinds of things. So you want to yes. make the decision for both July and August. I'm fine with that. My vacation's actually starting this weekend. So I'll be gone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be I'll be gone from the 26th and I'll be back in the office on the 5th. So we'll, we'll assume that we're meeting on the 18th of July and that at that point, um, we may bail on our August meetings if we don't see a need. Is yeah. that all right with everybody? Correct. Yeah. 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 And then uh, September, we'll really dig in again because like Maureen says, we've got to update the plan for that annual time. I, I would hope that at our July meeting, we'd have some accounting information so we've got a status report on what our balances are that's accurate um and i'll have i'll have the um hopefully i'll have a report back on who we did get the agreements back from i'll go ahead and i'll establish your dates i'm, I'm just, and then in july um you want to do your reorganization vote too Unless yeah. you want to do it tonight, but you could do it I mean, either way. Yeah, we can do that. Um, okay, so that's pretty much what your agenda will be. And and we can hit on signs again, because Wayne will probably have something to share with us at that point. But he's not coming in July. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna I, will, I will try. Oh, do your, <laughs> you know what, do your vacation. I think it's wonderful how, well, you guys are a really nice committee anyways. I tell her, Eloise does know, because she hears me say it in, in town hall, but you know what people that volunteer i think it's great but you know do your vacations like i'm looking forward to my next week. i'm not lying <laughs> I'm if ready. we were being paid we wouldn't feel bad about it I'm going, <laughs> I'm, going on, I'm going on record that if i'm not here do not appoint me to anything oh <laughs> fine mm -hmm. advance yeah Good luck. But, with yeah, that. you know, funny you should say that because that's how I became cleric. <laughs> Good luck trying to get me to do it. <laughs> but Carolyn, you have to admit it's the easiest clerk role you've ever had. It certainly is now that Maureen's on board. Yeah. It was, I definitely did not enjoy the minutes. No. Um, 
Anything else? Nice job. An hour. Oh, adjourn. Yeah. Okay. So a second. Second. It's non debatable. And Carolyn? Aye. Eleanor? Aye. Wayne? Aye. Eloise? Aye. MJ? Aye. Tim is aye.